There are solutions for Math 95. This is perfect problem five. We're asked to simplify a bunch of stuff. Simplify each of these guys. It looks like a lot of work, but I think once we kind of get the hang of it, you'll see that A, B, and C are pretty similar, and D, E, and F aren't that different. Uh, the first step that we'll want to do, as the hint alludes to, is we want to find these prime factorizations. So to figure out the prime factorization of 9,000, just find any two positive integers larger than one that multiply to give you 9,000. Um, I think the two that I would that would occur to me would be 9 and 1,000. And then 9 is 3 times 3. 1,000 is 10 times 100, which is 10 times 10. And each of these 10s are 2 times 5. So what I get is that 9,000 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 3 times 3. Um, I could do that same thing for 2304. Well, it's an even number, so it must be 2 times something. Um, half of 2304 would be, what, 1152, I think. Yeah, it looks right. Um, 1152, it's an even number, so it's 2 times something. Uh, half of 1152 is 576. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's got to be right. Um, 576, still even, so it's 2 times something. What is that something? Well, half of 576 is, this is getting difficult to do in my head. Should have just pulled out a calculator. 288, I believe. Uh, 288 times 2 would be, yeah, 576. Still even, so it's still 2 times something. Uh, in this case, 144. Uh, 144, I recognize that one. That's 12 times 12. 12 is, I don't know, 3 times 4. And each of those 4s are 2 times 2. So what we finally get is that 2304 is a bunch of 2s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2 to the 8th power. Um, and then a couple of 3s, 3 squared. And if you have this information up here, it makes parts a through f, not that bad. So for a, what I want to do is I want to find the square root of 9,000, but 9,000 is just 2 cubed times 5 cubed times 3 squared. And then I got x to the fifth and y to the fourth. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this up into two different radicals. Um, in class, I called them the good radical and the bad radical. On this one, the good one on the left, what I'm going to do is, since this is a square root, I'm going to put pairs of each of these different factors. So what I'm saying is 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2. So I kind of have a pair of two of these guys and then one left over here. 5 to the third, same idea. I got a pair of 5s, but then one 5 left over. Uh, 3 squared, just got a pair, nothing left over, so those go over here. x to the fifth, I actually have two pairs. So I can put four of those x's over here, and there's one left over over here. And y to the fourth, I stick all four of them over here because that makes two pairs. And what I now have under my good radical is a bunch of stuff um, that's a perfect square. The square root of two squared is just two. The square root of five squared is just five. The square root of three squared is just three. The square root of x to the fourth is x squared. And that's because x squared times x squared gives you x to the fourth. Same idea, the square root of y to the fourth is y squared. And then this stuff underneath this radical, there's nothing I can do with it. Just leave it alone. Um, this is the simplified version. Usually you take it one step further, you don't leave your answers 2 times 5 times 3. You say 2 times 5 is 10, and 10 times 3 is 30. So I get 30x squared y to the fourth times the square root of 10x, 10 being 2 times 5. Um, and that's what we're going to do for all of these. The only thing that will change, part b for example, is now we're talking about the cubed root. So when I have 2 cubed, 5 cubed, 3 squared, x to the fifth, and y to the fourth, and I'm going to break this up into two different cubed roots, 
what I got to do is instead of putting pairs over here on the good side, maybe I'll even label this. This is good and this is bad. Instead of putting pairs on the good side, I'm going to put triplets on the good side. Oh, groups of three, trios, I guess. Two to the third power. I got exactly three of them. Perfect. Stick all three over here. Nothing left to go over here. Five to the third power. Same thing. I got exactly three of them. Put them all over here. Three squared. I don't have enough for a trio, so they all have to go over here. X to the fifth power. Well, I can put three of them over here, but then I'm left with two of them that will go over here. Y to the fourth power. Uh, I could put three of them over here, and then I'm left with one over here. So what I get on this side is the cubed root of 2 cubed is 2. Cubed root of 5 cubed is 5. Cubed root of x cubed is x. Cubed root of y cubed is just y. And under my bad radical, I just leave all this stuff alone. So what I get for my final answer is 2 times 5 is 10. So I get this is equal to 10xy times the cubed root of, oh, uh, it looks like 3 squared, so that's a 9x squared y. C. Same idea, um, except instead of being a square root or a cubed root, looks like it's a fourth root. So as you may have guessed or known, we're going to split things up the exact same, except we're going to need groups of four to put it under the good radical. So I start out with the same problem. And then what I got to do is take, take each of those different factors and decide which ones go into the good radical and which ones go into the bad. And to get under the good side, you need to be in a group of four. So two cubed, I don't have enough to make a group of four. That goes over here. Uh, five cubed, I don't have enough. Goes over here. Three squared, don't have enough. Goes over here. X to the fifth, I finally have enough. I can put x to the fourth over here. I'm left with one x over here. Y to the fourth, put those all over here. Nothing left over here. So what I get when I simplify is the fourth root of x to the fourth is just x. The fourth root of y to the fourth is just y. And then underneath my bad radical, I have, well, all of my numbers ended up over here. 2 cubed, 5 cubed, 3 squared. You could multiply those all back together, or you could be like, wait a minute, isn't that just 9,000? Yep, it is. So I get the fourth root of 9,000, and then there's an x in here also. This becomes my answer. Uh, three more times. Start out with square roots. Except this time, we're not taking the square root of 9,000 x to the fifth y to the fourth. We're doing 2304 x to the eighth y to the sixth. So 2304, as we figured out earlier, is 2 to the eighth power times 3 squared. I came from this prime factorization up here. Then I got x to the eighth and y to the sixth. So if we're going to simplify a square root, we get a square root on the good side, square root on the bad side, and since it's a square root, we need pairs to make it over here. Well, 2 to the eighth is exactly four pairs of twos, and 3 squared is just one pair of threes. Um, x to the eighth, it's four pairs of these x squared things. Y to the sixth, turns out that everything can go on the good side here. Nothing on the bad side. So this guy simplifies as the square root of 2 to the 8th is 2 to the 4th. The square root of 3 squared is just 3. The square root of x to the 8th is x to the 4th. And the square root of y to the 6th is y cubed. Nothing underneath this radical. So what I get for my final answer is 2 to the 4th, which is 16, times 3 gives you 48. So I get 48 x to the 4th y cubed. Okay, moving on, E. A lot like D, except it's a cubed root. Cubed root of 2 to the 8th, y to the, nope, 3 to the 2nd, aka 3 squared, x to the 8th, and y to the 6th. Good radical, bad radical. Under the good side, I put trios, so 2 to the 8th. Well, I got two trios. I could put two to the sixth, and then I got two of these groups of three. Um, that leaves, leaves me with two left over, which I have to go over here. Three squared, I don't have enough. They all got to go over here. It's hard to read. Let me rewrite that. I don't know if that's any better. It's supposed to be a two, I promise. 
uh, 2 squared. Over here, I put 3 squared. And then I got x to the 8th. So I can put 6 of them over here. I'm left with 2 of them over here. y to the 6th, I can put all 6 over here. And if I simplify the good radical, I'm left with 2 squared, x squared, y squared, times my bad radical, the cubed root of 2 squared, 3 squared, x squared. So what I get for my final answer is 2 squared is just 4. So I got 4 x squared, y squared, times the cubed root of uh, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 9 times 4 is 36. So I get 36x squared. Uh, finally, f, same idea except now it's 4th root. Start out with 2 to the 8th, 3 squared, x to the 8th, y to the 6th, and break it up into two different 4th roots. 2 to the 8th, put them all over here. This is two groups of 4. 3 squared, I don't have enough, they go over here x to the 8th, again, two groups of 4, they all go over here. y to the 6th, well, I can put 4 of them over here, but then I got 2 of them left over here. And so this side simplifies, I guess I should put some equal signs in here. Um, this side simplifies as 2 squared x squared y. And then under my bad radical, I got the fourth root of 3 squared y squared. And I can rewrite that because 2 squared is just equal to 4. So I get 4x squared y times the fourth root of 9, which is 3 squared, y squared. And that's my final answer. So here's some practice simplifying some pretty hard radicals. Um, now when I ask you what the square root of 8 is, you'll be able to simplify it as 2 root 2 rather easily if you can get the hang of all of these. So I'll end this video here.